The following is a sponsored program paid for by First Alliance Credit Union. Welcome to Good Money Moves featuring Jenna Tubble from First Alliance Credit Union and Andy Brownell. Here's Andy Brownell on Rochester's News Talk 1340 KROC AM and 96.9 FM. Good morning. It's time for another episode of Good Money Moves. I'm Andy Brownell, News Talk 1340 KROC AM, along with Jenna Tobble from First Alliance Credit Union. And a repeat guest this time. Yes, yes. Uh, I brought Troy Brenhog back with me today because hey. hey, he knows so you, much about the things we're talking about. I wanted to have him come and share his knowledge with us. And if you remember, he was actually here back when we recorded episodes seven and eight when we were talking about debt consolidation. Oh, yeah. I do remember very, yeah. very well. Yeah. So what are we going to dig into this week? Interest rates. Oh, exciting stuff. <laughs> well, it is. Very it's the key stuff. to everything, isn't it? It is. It is. And uh, to give some context about why this is an important topic outside of the fact that it has to do with money, um, understanding interest rates is really one of the, the key pillars kind of of financial literacy. So if you have a solid understanding of interest rates, you can essentially make good money moves and make smart financial decisions. Um and we have kind of talked, touched on this topic here and there in past episodes, especially when we were talking about credit scores and, and savings accounts. Um, but we're going to really dig into some more detail about interest rates today. Okay, so let's dig in. I'm going to look right at Troy this time. What are interest rates to keep it at the very basic level? Yeah, so interest rates are um, two things, right? Interest rates can be um, something that you earn on the money that's deposited into your bank or credit union account. Um, That's the kind we like. Yeah, yeah. yeah, everybody likes that one. (laughs) Um, And the second one is um, interest rates that are charged on loans or when you borrow money, credit cards, those type of things. The cost of Mm -hmm. having the capital available. Absolutely, yeah. Okay. Yeah. So in reference to loans, how does this all work? The idea that I'm paying you interest. Right. So you uh, the easiest way to explain this. So an interest rate on a loan is the cost of a person that borrows money, right? Because um, financial institutions are in a big game of risk, right? Every time we give a loan, there's risk involved. Therefore, we charge interest um, because we are taking that risk, right? Mm-hmm. Um, and also you have costs, I imagine, as well. For sure, because those monies that we're borrowing out to you are actually coming from the dollars that people put into the institution to earn interest mm-hmm. on what they're putting in there, right? So mm-hmm. we have to pay the person that just put their 10 bucks in when we borrow you that $10. In order to do wonderful things. Absolutely. Yes. Absolutely. A little bit confusing because we're using the same term, interest rate yeah. or interest rate. And one is one that is going to cost me money, but the other is one that is going to pay me money. Yes. And oftentimes I'm doing this at the same time. Yes. <laughs> Absolutely. And, you know, when we think about interest rates and deposits too, um, a lot of times you'll see an APR or an APY. Yeah. Um, the APR uh, essentially is annual percentage rate. Um, That annual percentage rate is um, what a person will earn on an annual basis, so a one-year basis, right, Um, um, that is paid back to you. Now, annual percentage yield, right, it might be getting a little deep here, but annual percentage yield is the amount of interest that you earn but don't take out of your account. Okay. So you'll earn interest on it the next month, right? Mm -hmm. So a word called compounding. Okay. We'll cover that in a second. It's it's most basic. If I have a hundred bucks. Yes. And you're paying me 2% interest, Uh my APR would be $2. $2. Yes. And the other one would be if I left it in there and then now we're going to talk about compounding interest. Yes. So let's go explain compounding interest. Sure. So um, that $2 is broken down on a monthly basis. So we put a little bit in there at the end of each month, depending on what your average balance um, is in that account. Mm -hmm. So you'll get what in the credit union world that we call a dividend. 
Okay. So a dividend will be put into your account. So the two divided by 12, we're just going to call it 20 cents. Okay. So now that hundred dollars has $100 and 20, 20 cents, cents in there <laughs> that you're now earning interest on. Yeah. And that is considered a yield. Yeah. Okay. So essentially my balance will be growing by a little bit every month mm-hmm. and the it's not a static thing is what I'm getting at. Yeah. So, so it's good. more than $2. At the end of the year, I, I, I'm getting, in, in effect, being paid more than the $2 I, I, what we were talking about earlier for the APR. Correct. So you good. can think about APY as the amount you'll earn due to compounding interest on your account. So okay. the interest on interest. <laughs> so this is a very good thing. <laughs> it is actually a very magical thing it is. if you have it long-term is. savings. Um, it's mm-hmm, mm-hmm. one of those that uh, when you finally start to reap the benefits from it, you go, this is really good. <laughs> right. Yeah. <laughs> so who or how and why, this is always the most confusing thing to everybody. How do you determine what the interest rate should be either for when I'm borrowing money or I am earning a dividend as you would from the credit union? Yeah. So um, each institution essentially sets their rates when it comes to depositing money, right? And um, that's all based on the need for money a lot of times, okay? So if a financial institution is um, running low on liquid funds that they can borrow out, like I prefaced earlier, um, in the form of a loan, sometimes you'll see interest rates or specials that are a little high, right? Um, How they determine what the interest rate will be, um, that gets a little bit more complex. However, a good guide is um, when you hear the prime interest rate and how that adjusts, um, that is a big factor that kind of goes into Mm, maybe right sizing an interest rate so that um, that people stay competitive. It's like a so it's bar, a, a benchmark. Yeah, there you go. But you, when you say the institution sets its interest rates, mm-hmm. if I wanted to open up Andy's bank, I could go and pay out whatever inter- interest rate I choose. I mean, I, what I'm getting is: is there no federal banking regulation or something like that that would limit my ability to say, hey, you know what, I'll pay you 10% if you give me that $100. It may not make any business sense for me to do that, obviously. Right, right. That's what I'm going to get. Well, I think at the end of the day, um, I can't answer that question okay. indefinitely. But what make would make sense to me is um, um, uh, a financial institution, sh- I believe, can – set rates at whatever they want to set them at as long as they're able to pay them, right? Yeah. So, And you wouldn't, if you pay too high, you're obviously not going to be able to pay them. Correct. Exactly. Yeah. They're, I mean, generally speaking, financial institutions are very free to determine the interest rates that they want to pay on deposits or charge for loans. But at the end of the day, they have to be realistic about that and pay attention to the competition in the area, what the different policies um, at the federal level are that are going on and what that prime rate is being set at, which is set by the government. Um, so there is some government involvement in how rates are set, sure. but it gets it gets so complex that it's... <laughs> it gets really confusing Why? very quickly. But but yes, at the end of the day, financial institutions are determining their own rates. There's nobody saying banks can only charge this, credit unions can only yeah. charge this. There's That's nothing that's okay. in place well, like that. I mean, people do wonder. Yeah. Uh, mm-hmm. I suppose part of it, too, is because you are federally insured. Your deposit is at the credit union. Mm-hmm. The f- federal agency that does the insuring probably has want assurances that you're solvent <laughs> and you're not doing oh, yes. irresponsible right. things, yes. which right. would be yep. paying out exorbitant funds and interest mm-hmm. rates that yeah. are yeah. competitive. So when we, we I guess <clears throat> we're talking about like on the deposit side. Right. On the loan side, now we are um, regulated on how much we can charge mm-hmm. for interest okay. and credit unions um, here can charge up to 18%. Okay. Let's talk more about that about the loan side of the equation for interest rates. We'll do that right after this break. Jenna Topple, 
Troy Brenhog from First Alliance Credit Union here on Good Money Moves on News Talk 1340, KROC AM and 96.9 FM. Good Money Moves continues in moments with Andy Brownell and Jenna Tobble from First Alliance Credit Union. This is News Talk 1340, KROC AM and 96.9 FM. We're talking Good Money Moves with Andy Brownell and Jenna Tobble from First Alliance Credit Union on Rochester's News Talk, 1340 KROC AM and 96.9 FM. Welcome back to Good Money Moves. I'm Andy Brownell with News Talk, 1340 KROC AM and 96.9 FM, along with Jenna Tobble and Troy Brunhog from First Alliance Credit Union. And we're talking about the basics of capitalism today. (laughs) (laughs) Essentially, yes. (laughs) Interest rates. We uh, spent the first segment uh, this morning talking about mainly the interest that you are paid, how compounding interest is such a wonderful thing to have. But now we're going to switch over and talk about the lending side of it. And Troy, you mentioned that there are limitations on what the financial institutions charge or can charge as far as their... I don't know what the cost of borrowing money. Yeah, yeah. So you mentioned eighteen percent. Is that the government says you can't do that? So I, let me clarify on that. Okay, that's that's for credit unions. Sure. Um, now on the banking side, I'm not sure what that is. Okay. I do know on the credit card side, many many people, if they get an eighteen percent credit card rate, they're happy, right? I okay, mean, no, lots not. of them are twenty nine point nine nine. Um, that we have seen come in to wow. consolidate that. Yeah, it's crazy. Number one, avoid that. Yeah, 100%. <laughs> or pay your credit card off, and then it doesn't pertain to you. Yeah. <laughs> okay, well, back to um, determining the interest rate on any particular loan. Um, yeah. What are the different aspects of this? Uh, what What factors come into play in dictating interest rates? Sure. Um, so, like I prefaced way earlier, we, we play a big game of risk every day, um, especially when it comes to loans. Yeah. Because we borrow you a dollar, we expect a dollar back plus a little interest. Um, so the number one thing that comes into play um, is going to be a credit score, right? So what a credit score essentially says is um, that you can borrow money and pay it back without issues, and you don't do it too often. Um, so... Um, the second thing that will come into play is, uh, if you have a piece of collateral or not, most of the time, if you have a piece of collateral, you get a lower interest rate because if you can't pay, then the financial institution will get something back to be able to sell, to try to recoup the funds that you borrowed. Mitigate your risk. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So, I mean, those two things and, um, I guess um, collateral kind of goes with the type of loan, right? Yeah. How, uh, mortgage, you have your house or real estate. Mm-hmm. Um, auto loans, you obviously have a car, truck, vehicle. And then the rest kind of fall into a maybe an unsecured type of loan, which obviously presents more risk. So you may uh, pay more interest. And usually yeah. you pay more interest when you borrow money like that. Yeah. So I imagine you mentioned a mortgage. Yeah. There you, in most cases, you have a, an investment that grows in value and thereby probably the lowest risk for the institution. Potentially. Potentially, okay. Mm-hmm. But the, where the risk falls in is the dollar amount you borrow. So what I mean by that is in Rochester, I think they deem it an affordable house to be somewhere around $220,000, Right. Um, I have yet to see a car come across my desk for a car loan request for 220000 I know they're out there, but um, so with that being said. <laughs> That's a very good point. Right? Um, okay. Sometimes auto loans are actually have less intre- have, have a lower interest rate than a mortgage does. Okay, now you have to explain that. Right? Um, uh, with that, uh, again, it, it, it really boils down to Um, the dollar amount that you're borrowing out, right? Um, The only way I can think about that is a typical auto loan uh, might be, well, at our institution is less than $50,000. Most home loans are north of $50,000. Quite a bit, I imagine. Right. Have one car loan default at $25,000. 
hurts less than one real estate loan defaulting at 150000 Okay. But I would imagine the appreciating value of the real estate would make it easier to recoup your loss from the defaulted loan than what is usually the case with a boat or a car where they depreciate in value. Yeah. So I imagine that gets factored in as well. It does. Mm -hmm. Um, What you have to uh, remember also is that um, when it comes to um, what's called loan to value, so how much your collateral is worth compared to how much or how much you're lending in comparison to how much your collateral is worth, most of the time um, we find that auto loans have a better loan to value than a house does. Again. Interesting. Purely off of the size yeah. and the scope of, of purchase price. Mm-hmm. I would have thought the opposite <laughs> way, but that's very, very sure. interesting. Yeah. Yeah. And all this factors yeah. into the things you're talking about, how much that interest rate ends up being on your loan. Right. right. And I think another thing to, to keep in mind, too, is the amount of time you're looking to repay the loan. Oh, sure. That plays a factor as well. So if you're looking you know, for a shorter term loan, you're going to probably get a better interest rate than a longer term loan because that's more time that you have the possibility to default to, to make that repayment. And that goes the same for a mortgage or a car loan, personal loan, whatever it may be. Does that also factor in, this is going to be deep into capitalism oh, now, sure. <laughs> that the longer, let's say a 20-year, 30-year mortgage you as a financial institution are not only taking a bet on the ability of the person taking the loan to repay the loan, but what the market's going to do as far as interest rates paid out to depositors. Because you could have something happen in the economy that you ended up, through competitive reasons, having to pay more out percentage-wise on a deposit than what you're collecting on the other end, and you have to factor that in. Right, yes. that risk. It gets very complicated. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, my brain. Kind of going, yeah. <laughs> well, and if you think, here's a prime example: is if you think of what none of us will probably ever forget is 2008 and 2009 when we had this the the mortgage crash and oh, recession, yeah. right? Um, that right there uh, alone is the the risk that we look at. So you got economic um, conditions that that drive the price of pretty near everything out there. So the longer you stretch it out, the more risk the institution's taken on because there's so many variables that could interject. So there's this little black box on your desk <laughs> that you push a couple <laughs> buttons and it goes ding, 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 and it kicks out a number. Yep, there you go. <laughs> so That's how I imagine it works. Yeah. Uh, yeah. We're talking interest rates and good money moves. It's kind of the one of the fundamental building blocks of financial literacy, understanding how this works. Mm -hmm. So we're going to continue talking to Troy Brenhog and Jenna Tobble about interest rates and good money moves when we return on News Talk 1340, KROC AM and 96.9 FM. Good Money Moves continues in moments with Andy Brownell and Jenna Tobble from First Alliance Credit Union. This is News Talk 1340, KROC AM and 96.9 FM. We're talking good money moves with Andy Brownell and Jenna Tobble from First Alliance Credit Union on Rochester's News Talk, 1340 KROC AM and 96.9 FM. Welcome back to Good Money Moves. I'm Andy Brownell, News Talk, 1340 KROC AM and 96.9 FM. Troy Brenhog and Jenna Tobble from the First Alliance Credit Union with us this morning. And we've been talking about interest rates, the basic building block of <laughs> capitalism. It is. I, it, it, is. It, it makes uh, all, it's the grease that turns all the wheels. Mm-hmm. Essentially, right. if I'm a person who, uh, a business owner or want to own a home and I don't have enough money to pay cash for it and somebody else had cash on hand, which they deposited in a financial institution, the financial institution calculates the risk and then sends it out to me, the person in need, so I can create Something with that money. Exactly. And, yep. and it turns into good things. Yes. Jobs and uh, asset <laughs> values and wealth. Yes. It's Absolutely. Makes all the wheels turn. But earlier we kind of touched on the federal government's role in all of this. And I always get the news reports from the federal policymakers. They'll make the big announcement. You know, the Fed left this rate unchanged or the Fed 
raise the rate by a quarter point or it's in this range. And it, you know, it has a big impact. You see the stock market react immediately to whatever they have to say. Mm -hmm. Does that have a direct impact on anything that the First Alliance Credit Union or other financial institutions do as far as interest rates? Yeah. So um, at First Alliance, um, we offer credit cards and a couple of other products that are tied directly to that rate that you're referring to, the prime interest rate. Um, with that being said, um, all credit cards need to be tied to an index. Um, and essentially, in a nutshell, what that's saying is for us, um, we use the prime interest rate because we figured that changes the least out of all these different indexes okay. out there, which are there's, there's a the variety of them. Yep. Um, so every time it changes a quarter percent, um, we change a quarter percent on our credit cards in that same direction. Okay. Either up or down. Either up or down. Right. So, yeah. So does the government dictate how you base the index? I mean, obviously it's the prime plus something. Is that where that any limits come in or any controls over that, or is that up to the individual institution to decide how that index will impact the rate? Yeah. So the financial institutions, right, they want to be uh, competitive amongst each other so yeah. they can get business. Um, that's where that plus margin comes in. Um, I, I know that um, some will, uh, I mean, you could go plus a, a quarter percent all the way up to plus five percent right um and it's all dependent on um how comfortable you are with that particular product and the risk that's involved so that comes into the pricing aspect um what i can tell you is uh one of our products is a home equity line of credit right so it works like a credit card a but revolving. It re yeah, yeah it revolves um we set our our interest rates based off the prime and then your loan to value, right? Mm -hmm. So the more equity you have, the lower your rate. That makes sense. Right. Because mm -hmm. it's less risk. Right. Mm -hmm. Yep. That's all it is, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> uh, the basic value of it, I mean, the basic equation is going to be how much money you need mm -hmm. being the borrower mm -hmm. and how much of a stake you actually have in it. Right. Yeah. Whether or not you have collateral mm -hmm. or not and how much how far out in the limb the bank is going or the financial institution, the credit union. Exactly. On your behalf. Yes. Independent. It's on, not magic. Right. <laughs> but in depending on the product also um, for our homes, right, um, it's called risk-based pricing. So the higher your credit score, the lower your rate, just like credit cards and, mm -hmm. um, yeah, really any loan that you get, um, you your proven ability – to pay back loans is going to work in your favor in the form of interest. Yeah, yeah. if you need to borrow money, it's going to have a huge impact huge. on how much you end up paying out over the many years that you. Exactly. And that's why we've been talking about this this many months. Is yes. that correct? Yes, <laughs> yes, it is. It all fits together. It, it does. all does. Okay, so um, interest rates, borrowing money, uh, putting money into your account at the First Alliance Credit Union, and how the interest rates are. Determined, I'm guessing that I could read about this a little bit on the website. Of course. Yeah, so if you visit our website, firstalliancecu.com, we've got uh, information about all of this stuff on our blog. Um, I would highly recommend just taking a few minutes to play around with some of like the loan payment and savings calculators that we have on our website just to get a feel for what interest rate actually does to your deposit and your savings. You can learn so much just from playing around with calculators like that. Will that show you the compounding rate, the APY? We do have a calculator that will oh, cool. take that into effect. Yep. See, now I yep. picked up a new term already. You did. <laughs> you did. <laughs> Used it in a sentence. Yeah. Um, and, but it, if you want to see what it's going to do for your very specific situation, you know, come sit down and talk with our advisors. They can kind of show you what is going on in your life and how that's going to impact the, the the rates that you earn or the rates that you pay. So, And I imagine from our past conversations, they might also be able to help you push that credit rating up a little bit. And improve Take yours. some actions. Yes, yeah. absolutely. Help Have you make a plan. A plan. Yep. All about good money moves. Yeah. That's for sure. Awesome. So interest rates. That's what we talked about today, and I know there was going to be one more thing I was going to ask you about because it's come up before, and I, 
when we're talking about the deposits, yeah. you have different rates on different types of deposits. We've talked about that before, that like your holiday savings plan yes. and things like that. Mm -hmm. I'm going to take a stab in the dark here. The reason you can pay a little bit higher interest rate on those loans, or not loans, those deposits, would be that you have a guarantee or a pretty strong incentive for that money to stay put where it's at. Correct. Yeah. So if you are getting into a deposit account where you're more restricted on your access to your funds, you're likely going to have a higher interest rate that goes with that. Because that gives you, the financial institution, more freedom yes. to use those funds. It guarantees that we'll have those funds available. Yeah. Yep. All makes sense. It does. Plus and minus. Yeah. <laughs> it is. Yeah. All right. Until you're coming back next week, right, Troy? I am. Fantastic. Jenna, thanks so much. Yeah. Everybody have a great rest of the weekend. For Good Money Moves on News Talk 1340, KROC AM and 96.9 FM, I'm Andy Brownell.